hello you're welcome back all right so we'll continue from where we stop so now in this part of the tutorial we're going to be looking at uh, uh, these three parameters okay um resistor resistance and conductivity okay so i will start with a uh, resistor resistance right so i'll start with resistance now what is resistance in electricity okay now this resistance is electrical resistance the electrical resistance is uh, defined as the opposition okay opposition to the flow of electrical current now opposition to the flow of electrical current and every material offers some um, some sort of resistance to the flow of electrical material electrical current okay be it a conductor which simply means that if i have a conductor let's say a conductor in form of a piece of wire okay that is actually connected uh, across a voltage source this conductor is meant to allow current to flow through it yes it will definitely allow current to flow through it but the conductor okay due to the material that is actually that, that conductor is being made up of right can offer some resistance which will resist the flow of current so it simply means that if the current that was supposed to flow through this conductor is two ampere okay so if this conductor has some resistance it might actually resist some of these two ampere that you might end up having some okay uh current that's lower than two ampere flowing through it so the opposition to the flow of uh electrical current okay offered by um, any material is what is known as resistance okay so now for us to be able to actually measure it, resist the resistance of a particular uh, conductor right let's just take for example i have a cylindrical conductor okay now for me to be able to measure the resistance of this conductor first then i need to actually get to know is the length of the conductor okay now it is noted that the resistance of any material is directly proportional to the length of that material so the longer the length the more the resistance you get okay but inversely proportional to the cross-sectional area so in this case now the cross-sectional area is simply the base area of the cylinder because here i have a cylinder this conductor is a cylinder okay so the uh, cross-sectional area is the the area of the of the base of the cylinder and the base of the cylinder is actually a circle so invariably now the cross-sectional area of this uh of this conductor in a cylindrical form is giving us a pi r square okay and we know already that uh radius is always equal to diameter over two so in terms of diameter that's going to be pi diameter over two or square okay because radius is diameter over two or square so that way okay if what we are dealing with is a uh, a cylindrical conductor then the cross-sectional area is going to be is giving us pi d square d square then of course two square is four divided by four all right so that is just uh, the cross-sectional area so now now you know very well that if i should um replace the proportionality to equals and i have to introduce a constant okay now the constant i'm going to introduce is actually a constant that is specific to a particular uh, material right so and that particular constant of course uh, that have this symbol all right is what is known as specific resistance or resistivity so that is uh what we have here so this constant here is the resistivity of that material that i want to measure the resistance okay so i can actually write down the parameters of all the things that you see here okay, um the this here is the resistivity this right here is the resistivity of of that particular material okay the resistivity and of course different materials have different resistivity to electrical current 
copper there's a table that will actually give you the list of the resistivity of different uh, substance okay aluminium have its resistivity so because different material have the resistivity that is why the resistance they offer actually varies the resistance that copper offers to flow of current is different from the resistance that aluminium will offer to the flow of current but generally we say that uh, based on electrical uh, conductivity okay or resistivity a material can either be said to be a conductor okay or an insulator or okay or you can even go further to the that material can be a semiconductor now conductors are actually the uh, are the material that have a very low resistance which simply means that they actually offer free flow of current okay why insulators has a very high resistance that they they almost oppose the uh, the flow of electrical current through them okay so please take note of this so we have this particular uh, resistance given us resistivity multiplied by length all over area okay of course the L here is the length of the material okay the length of the material why the A is the area okay so depending on the shape of the material so we can evaluate the like we will let the area like in this case for a cylinder this cross sectional area okay so the a is the cross let me just put that well it's called the cross sectional area not the not the entire surface area okay cross section area the cross section area cross section area all right so i have i have all this okay so so invariably now if i need to actually um the si unit first of all the si unit of resistance okay the si unit of resistance is ohms so resistance is being measured in ohms now let's look at the si unit of resistivity i have to rearrange this particular formula so if i mark if i make resistivity in the solid formula here if i first of all I have to cross multiply right if i cross multiply i'm going to have um, this all over one right resistivity multiplied by one that's gonna give me resistivity resistivity l multiplied by one is resistivity l then of course uh, a multiplied by r that's gonna be r a so that way i can now say that um Okay, that way I can now simply say that the resistivity is giving us resistance multiplied by area, then divided by length. Okay, so now I can get the SI unit of resistivity. So what will be the SI unit of resistivity? The SI unit of resistance already is ohm. The SI unit of uh, area is meter square. Okay, why the SI unit of length is meter? so meter square divide meter half meter so the s unit of resistivity is going to be ohm meter okay while resistance is ohms then s unit of resistivity is ohm meter so please take note of that okay so now i've discussed this resistance we've talked about resistivity now the next is conductivity okay what is conductivity conductivity is the reciprocal of resistivity okay so what i mean by reciprocal is uh conductivity is one all over resistivity one all over resistivity so when you do one all over resistivity that gives you conductivity and that's what is known as conductance okay if conductivity is one all over resistivity then conductance is one all over resistance so that is how they are related conductance of a material is one all over the resistance okay so let's start with the SI unit so what will be the SI unit of conductivity since the SI unit of resistivity is ohmmeter all right then the SI unit of conductivity will be per ohm then per meter that's one all over okay per ohm per meter because it's the reciprocal of our resistivity okay now since conductance is one all over resistance the SI unit of conductance is going to be 
pay on all right so please take note of that okay so just find somewhere and write those formula down then we will definitely utilize them later on all right so here we go we proceed so the next thing that we are going to talk about now is what is known as a, the terminal terminal uh, voltage okay and lost vote terminal voltage and lost vote and lost vote now before we discuss or uh, before we talk about terminal voltage let's start with a lost vote okay as the name imply a lost vote is actually the voltage or the potential difference that is lost from a source okay or even um, a cell due to its internal resistance okay so that voltage that is lost okay voltage lost due to due to the internal resistance the internal resistance of a cell okay so already we already know that a cell okay uh, or even a battery these are the source of it's our source of emf okay our emf so a cell is supposed to deliver a potential difference okay because a cell stores energy we talked about that okay a form of chemical energy which is converted to electrical energy that provide a potential difference to drive current across an external conductor right but it is called that some most cells are not ideal they are not ideal in the sense that they are the voltage that they are supposed to deliver the rated voltage is not what they deliver okay so let's say that particular cell is rated uh, you is rated 1.5 volt okay that simply means that the cell is supposed to deliver to the standard circuit or a standard load 1.5 volt but in most cases it's called that cell okay uh that support that supposed to deliver 1.5 volt will not deliver 100 percent of this 1.5 volts so there will be some losses you might end up delivering 1.4 volts okay so some it is called that some voltage is being lost and what is the cause of that voltage every cell always have an internal resistance so that is why that cell is not an ideal cell okay an ideal cell will always have some internal resistance that will resist the flow of current to the external circuit so that means if i want to draw the ideal schematic diagram of a cell okay i'll have to include that internal resistance okay that is connected to the cell so if you see me using small letter r that's its internal resistance connected to the cell okay and that internal resistance is connected in series with the cell then it is now when this uh, i include i have included the internal resistance that i can now okay connect that cell to an external load okay so now this symbol don't forget that this is the symbol of resistance all right so resistance also have this we also use this as a symbol of resistance okay so now let's see what actually happens now so we simply means that so before current this cell can deliver current okay let me call the external load or the external resistance okay capital letter r so that means before this cell can deliver current okay to this external resistance first of all it must pass through it must be opposed by the internal resistance before now it passes through the internal resistance okay now there's a man known as ohm's law i'm very sure that before now you must have actually stated ohm's law according to ohm's law we say that the voltage supply okay is always equal to 
uh, current times resistance. So in this case now, the voltage is the EMF of the cell, okay? Let's say the voltage is the EMF of this cell. It's equal to the current that is delivered by the cell, okay? Then times the resistance. But it happened that the resistance I have now is not just one resistance. I have two resistance connected in series. Yes, this is a series connection. Remember, I told you that components are connected in series in as much as no, there is no branch, okay? In their pathway. That's, this is not a branch. This is just a wire that is the same wire, okay? A branch is a point where there is another connection, but there's no connection here. So that simply means that this internal resistance and this external resistance, they are in series. And for you to actually combine two of them, so that means total resistance is going to be the sum of the external resistance plus the internal resistance, okay? So that means the EMF delivered by the cell, okay, is equal to is equal to the current, okay, delivered by the cell times the sum of the internal and the external resistance. That way now can be able to evaluate the current, okay, that is that is being delivered by the cell to the external circuit, and that is given by the formula E all over external resistance plus internal resistance. Okay. That is just one formula, okay? I'll just call it formula number one. So, take note of this formula. Anytime you are being asked to evaluate the current delivered by a cell that has an internal resistance R, this is how you evaluate it. But there is another formula I want us to generate. Remember, we are talking about terminal voltage and loss volts, okay? And I told you that loss volt is due to the voltage loss due to internal resistance. So, how will I get to, how will I get my loss volt? That means the EMF now is going to be quoted from this particular equation. Okay, let me call this, call this equation 2. Let's just do B equation 1, okay? Let me expand this bracket. Expanding this bracket, I multiply by capital letter R. I'm going to have capital letter R. So current times the external resistance, then I multiply by small letter R. I have I small letter R. So there are two I R, I capital letter R and I small letter R. Okay, is this now this I small letter R that I call the loss of vote current times the internal resistance is now what we refer to as the loss of vote. Why this current times the external resistance is now the terminal voltage. This is the voltage now. Terminal voltage is the voltage available for the external load. Okay, external circuit. So this is what we call the terminal. terminal voltage okay or terminal pd is still the same term remember voltage and pd they are the same okay so that means the emf that is delivered by the cell first of all will actually okay will actually is is going to be of two parts the one that is lost plus the one that is actually available to the standard circuit okay lost foot plus terminal voltage so i can use um capital letter V to represent the terminal voltage and of course small letter V to represent the loss volt. okay so please take note of that all right so now uh, I can solve some question but I, bl I believe that after this uh, video we're still going to look at a more examination question okay let's look at uh, a typical example where you have An external resistor of 6 ohm connected across two cell in series. These two cells are in series, and each of these two cells have internal resistance of 2 ohm. 2 ohm. Okay, let's say uh, the first two, they also have the voltage is 2 volt, 2 volt. So, so two cells connected in series and these two cells have internal resistance. Okay, so now let's say the question is for us to calculate the current, the circuit current, the current that is being delivered by the cell. So, 
simple. The corn that's been delivered by the cell is going to be equal to E all over capital letter R plus small letter R. Okay, so this is going to be equal to E divided by capital letter R. Okay, is the external resistance which is 46 ohm, then plus small letter R. Okay. 2 ohm and 2 ohm connected in series. When you add it together, okay, when resistors are connected in series, you add them. Please take note. Unlike capacitors, when they are connected in series, you find their reciprocal, the sum of their reciprocal, okay? So 2 plus 2, that gives me 4. Okay? Then, of course, the voltage also is in series, okay? If voltage are in series, you also add it. That's 2 plus 2. So at the end of the day, now I'm going to have 4 divided by 4 plus 6. That's 10. That simply means that my current, the circuit current, is going to be equal to 0 0.4 ampere. All right, so I hope that is well understood. Okay. So this is one of the application of uh, uh, internal, okay, um, loss vote and of course terminal voltage of a battery. So we're going to look at more question, okay, as we proceed, but then okay we are going to talk about in the next video we're going to talk about measurement of an unknown resistance resistor measurement okay measurement and this measurement is a measurement that is done with a measuring instruments okay so we'll talk about measurement and uh, some level of instrumentation all right so we'll do that in the next video so see you in the next video thank you very much